Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Um, certainly didn't do much at the deadline, uh, but uh, would love to talk to you about the Cavaliers, us moving forward, what it looks like, um, our development, our growth, and uh, where we are in the league right now. Uh, just from a trade standpoint, um, we, we just didn't feel like anything was going to really move the needle for us. Um, I think you guys know me well enough to know I, I scoured the market and talked talk to every team I could. Um, we could have made a move that was lateral, uh, multiple moves that were lateral that I didn't think appreciably made us better. Um, and I really wanted to see what this group looked like um, together, fully healthy, uh, that we've seen in the last week, uh, week and a half, um, and the potential of this group, um, which we've seen right in front of our eyes continue to grow. Um, and I, I think there's value in continuity. Um, I think there's value in giving this, this group a runway. Um, and sometimes, as a GM, you, you, you just say to yourself, don't, don't mess this up. And, and I think that was a, a big key uh, for us this, this, uh, this deadline. Uh, not easy for me. Uh, you guys know I'm volume, volume heavy. Um, but to take a step back and realize the growth we've seen already uh, mixed with the results. Uh, we're, we're the fifth best team in the NBA right now. Uh, 35 wins, which is the fourth best in the NBA. And, and some really good numbers to back up what I think you guys see on the court every day. So with that, I didn't see anything that was appreciably going to make us better and put us over the top. Um, and so I'm happy. I'm really happy with where we are and, and where we're going. So with that, I'll, I'll open it up for questions about either the deadline, uh, which isn't much, um, or about specific players or what we, what we have going on as a team. Kobe, did some of the movement elsewhere in the last 24 or 48 hours kind of change things for you? I know you probably had different mindset a week ago than maybe you had over the last couple of days? Yeah, I think um, there was certainly a monumental shift in the, in the landscape. Um, different calls you made today based on that, just to see what, what was what and if anything else were to shake out. Um, but again, there was nothing that was available that was going to move the needle for us. What area of the team, Kobe, were you trying to improve? I think it was more a skill set and fit that I was looking at. Um, and again, I, I, I didn't see who was going to come in and appreciably make us better, who was going to come in and take minutes from who we have. I think the other piece that, um, and it's not a trade deadline acquisition, but it is an acquisition in some ways, is uh, bringing Ricky Rubio back online and what that means for us and um, sort of re ingratiating him into the program, giving him back that second unit. Um, different guys have, have games have elevated with him around. The confidence level with him just being on the floor elevates us. A lot more open looks. Um, I think you know. I think we're we're top ten in, in three point shooting percentage in the league. Obviously, everybody wants more shooting. That's something I looked at. Um, but I, I also know that where are those minutes going to go to? You know, in that in that starting five, which has been really good with Isaac Okoro. You know who you take who you taking off the floor there um, when that when that group as a as a starting five is I think plus seven point three net rating um, with a substantial sample size now who are you taking off the floor there right and so um, you know I'm, I'm excited about the future in that in the group and and so to detract from that I, I I didn't see it but to your point it wasn't so much position it's just more more of a skill set and fit um, and I, I didn't I didn't I didn't like the the options um, to, to go there. Do you anticipate having any buyout discussions with Kevin? No, um, I was not. Not one time since I've been here have they approached me about that. Um, I think, you know, we're asking Kevin to to to, to make another sacrifice this year, uh, to to do what he's doing right now, which is be a great teammate, stay positive every day, um, stay ready, and 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 work on your body, work on your shot, work on everything to be ready for when that opportunity comes next. Um, we got healthy, and I think JB liked the rotation that we were going with, and I think that's, that's a part of it. Not easy for Kevin, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure, and I've had conversations with him. He wants to play. Um, I think he'll have an opportunity to, to play again this year. But where we're at now, I think JB is really comfortable with, with the rotation that we have. But to your question, I've, I have not been approached by them at all, and um, I don't anticipate it either. With the deadline now passed, yes. have your expectations changed about what you know the second half of the season, postseason looks like for you guys? 
It, it hasn't. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I think I've told a, a couple of you guys this offline. No, Tom and, and, and Jason, I've told this for sure. Is there's there's no trade I could have accomplished that was going to uh, account for Darius Garland playing in his first playoff series, Evan Mobley playing in his first playoff series, Isaac Okoro playing in his first playoff series. We have to go through that as a team. We have the second youngest starting lineup in the NBA. We're average of 23.2 um, years, and I ran that today just to make sure I was sure. OKC's number one, and we're tied for second for the youngest in the NBA. And we have to go through those experiences. We're going to have to go down the stretch here and, and battle for our position. We're going to have to go, and hopefully, knock on wood, go into a playoff series and see what that feels like. Um, and I'm excited about, about that. Um, and, and that's the growth. That's the maturation um, that I want to see from this group down the stretch. And really take a step back and let them experience this, th th this kind of basketball. Uh, that's very, very new for us. Um, and give them the runway to achieve, um, have setbacks, and, and grow from those experiences. But it's a really, really exciting place to be. And it's a huge reason why I just didn't feel like, don't, don't, don't tinker with stuff. Like, give this group the, what they deserve, what they've already accomplished. Um, this is an incredibly uh, competitive league that's only ramped up more um, this year, this is the most competitive league's ever been. And I think you, from the eye test, you can see that. From the records, you can see that. The data bears that out. I think this is 16 teams are within five games of 500, either way, right? 16 teams. Um, the record for that is eight teams at the end of the year. And that could go either way. We'll see how it ends up. But this will go down in history as the most competitive year in the NBA from a record standpoint. And you can see the arms races going on. Right. We're really fortunate. I'm really glad we did what we did in the summer to bring in a Donovan Mitchell because it's so competitive and, and hyper, I mean, hyper competitive in the trade market, hyper competitive in the standings. And so that was our big move to really lift our ceiling and now giving these guys the runway to to, to really achieve as a group together. Um, you know, we, we want to see how that how that sort of plays out as as the season goes on. Building off of that bigger picture lens, yeah. when you did make the move for Donovan, did you think about that? Of like, okay, this is probably going to be our big move for the season, to come even the trade deadline, or is that? I don't know. Did you think about that at the time in September? I knew that we weren't going to top that move <laughs> <laughs> come to come trade deadline. Um, I think it's been a seamless fit. Mm -hmm. I think it's been um, some really exciting basketball. Um, the question that everyone was worried about are him and Darius going to fit? Darius is has had an all-star season last year. He's having an even better season this year, which is unfortunate that it's not n known nationally that he's actually having a better year than he did last year. Um, those two have a, a plus seven net rating on the floor together. Um, that has been seamless and really exciting. And so um, when we made that move, it was we knew the East was going to get better. Uh, we knew we had to compete in this 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 hyper competitive industry um, that keeps getting better um, and to, to stay stay at pace uh, with these other teams um, I'm thrilled with where we are and, and where we're going and and I think I think Donovan is as well Kobe there was a lot of conversation about Karras obviously yeah. um, in part because of his contract situation mm -hmm. being a free agent this offseason um, how much interest is there in, in bringing him back on an extension I think well one there's there's a there's a lot of interest um, to keep him here um, we obviously kept him through the deadline for for a reason um, we acquired Karis um, last year in vastly different circumstances if you remember we had Darius Garland and no other ball handlers and literally so Ricky was out for the year we had lost Colin for the year and so we brought Karis in under vastly different pretenses. I think what he's done this year is tried to adapt his game to two ball dominant um, all world guards. Um, he's gotten better at his spot up shooting. His, he's had a career high this year at 37% a game in terms of shooting and that's not even his real piece. He's just a really good basketball player and I think he's embraced the challenge of, de of being a, a defensive stopper. The thing that really speaks to me too is and, and I'm a softie for this but Guys that really want to be here, 
guys that show up every day to work, that have a great attitude, that are, are whatever their role is. And again, he had to take a substantial step back, be a six-man type when he could be starting in the NBA on a lot of different teams and being like, I, I want to make this work. I want to be here. That's meaningful to me. Um, it's meaningful to this organization, and it's um, you know it's a big reason why he's here. The other thing too is, um, let's be honest, like we're not playing guys 82 games a year anymore, and to be able to spot start Karras at times is a is an absolute luxury, and we learned that last year. We you know we can't have enough ball handlers, and we'll see in the playoffs. Um, I know it's been a, a, a few years now, but. Um, to break your man off the dribble when everything else breaks down and your set play is not working, you're going to need guys to go get, get some stuff for you and manufacture some runs, if you will. And um, he remains a very important part of, of what we're doing. He's just a really good basketball player. And um, I know he's thrilled to still be here, and we're happy that he's here as well. Kobe, you have to balance today with tomorrow sure. as well. Yep. And you know, obviously just the impact now because um, you didn't find anything to move the needle for you. Just tie, Big picture wise, how, how do you feel about your flexibility or ability in the off season and in the future, if you need to find something to move the needle, that you're still going to be able to maybe even you know, to do that? Yeah. So, um, as much flexibility that you can when you operate over the cap, we have, um, and a big reason for that is as Evan Mobley is really, really good, and he's still on rookie scale, so it gives us the ability to um, add players and not become super expensive, like going into the tax. And so next year, um, we'll have the ability to resign our vets. We'll have our mid-level exception if we want to use. Um, we have second round picks if we want to go that direction. Um, I think we have a lot of flexibility. Um, but again, it's, it's under the guise of how do they help that, that, that young core? Like, how, how are they going to come in and contribute? It has to be, to Chris's question, like, it has to be a fit. It has to be a fit and a skill set that adds. I don't need to. We don't need to take swings. You don't need to take these. These. You know. Find this incredible talent that you have to build around. I think we found that, which is the hardest part. And now, does it work within the group? And does it make the team better? How much has Isaac's improved game offensively helped influence what you view as a needle-making move? Um, it's a. You know, Danny. It's a great question. Just because, I think, we've been hammered since since this off season and what are you going to do at the wing? Um, I don't know how many stories Chris has had about, about that, but we've always wanted, <laughs> we've always wanted the solution to be internal. That's the ideal, right? Is you're, you're developing within and helping guys achieve from within. And I'm, I'm so happy for Isaac who puts the most work in that now he deserves that sort of three and D um, uh, position that we drafted him as. Uh, that can guard one through four, that really puts pressure on the defense. I think what you're seeing from us, from Isaac specifically, um, is a dude that right away you, f you feel that defense, right as soon as you get across half court, right? Or you want to take a shooter out and he's making you catch 40 feet out, right? That sets the tone for your defense, and he does that remarkably well. And now he's hitting the three ball um, and giving space to our guards, which we really need. And now when you, you hit him in the corner, you have to close out, and he's making really good plays. So between him, uh, Dean, um, Jetty, we always wanted to hopefully have that be internal and not use more assets to go outside and hope it works, right? That's the other part, too, is at the deadline, you're making these deals and hoping that it fits, right? You're, in, you're, re, you're ingratiating a new person to this system. Everyone has to adapt around this person. You have to change the way you play a little bit to accentuate their positives. Um, keeping the continuity and let the internal growth happen, I think, was, was a big part of it. And seeing those signs certainly gave us pause to, Isaac's only 22 years old, and he's getting better every single day. Um, let's let that play out. Last question. Sort of the 30,000-foot yeah. view. Ten years ago, teams were not trading picks like we've seen. It's incredible. I, I, we were talking about that, but continue your question. Well, yeah, yeah. Kind of where I was yeah. going with it, like to see, I mean, Houston controls Brooklyn's draft, Brooklyn controls Phoenix, Utah has you guys in the future. We've never seen that before. Is that teams reevaluating the value of picks, or is that players become available that were never of that caliber that never became available? I think it's a combination. Um, 
and we, I, like, I asked my group in there now, I said, I said, gosh, like, because someone just got reported that someone got traded for five for second round picks, and another guy got traded for five second round picks. Um, what's happened to the value of, of draft assets? And the only thing I think that has changed, that I know is a appreciably changed um, in the last two or three years, is this playing game, right? So now 20 to 22 teams are now in it that think they can make the playoffs. And now there's just an absolute arms race to acquire talent. And the prices keep going up, up, and up. On the bottom half, the, play, the teams that aren't in it, that are sellers, that price is going up. And so every transaction now seems to be more and more expensive. And you have to recalibrate. Like, same thing for us when we were in the Donovan Mitchell thing. It's like, that's a lot. But you know what? That's what that's the going rate is for that caliber of player and that superstar that's under that, that level of contract. And, you know, I think we had a great future without Donovan. And, and I can't imagine not having him right now is another part of it. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think to be in the marketplace and to be competitive, you're going to have to really hand over a lot of your draft assets. Um, and we'll see what works, right? A lot of the times it's risky. But I think you're right in terms of the marketplace. It's definitely changed. And there's just a lot more, a lot more pick assets going out. So, are we good? Does anyone have anything else? I don't want to make sure that I get everybody. Does everybody got anything? Do Last you one. Anticipate being aggressive in the bio market. Depends who who becomes available. We have a roster spot, um, and then it has to fit. And then again, like I'm like, promise you, like character really really important for us. I, that locker room is it, it, it it's incredible, and I. I don't know the rock locker rooms. I'm not in other locker rooms, but I know what we have going on is a rare thing where guys love playing for each other. They're, it's genuine. There's relationships there. They care about each other. Who, if there's a person there that can add to that, um, we might, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. If not, if it's a toss, if it's a jump ball, we're, we're good. Were you amazed by the volume of trades over the last? I actually thought, and I've told you guys too, I'll show you how wrong I was. I thought it was going to be a quiet, quiet deadline. Um, but this is the NBA, and the NBA never stops. And um, it, it's, it's really fragile. It's a really fragile industry. Um, and and um, you, you don't know what's going to tip one way or the other. And when a domino falls, it just completely well, sends ripples throughout the league. And I think we're one of two or three teams that didn't make a move this whole trade deadline, which is also abnormal, right? And it's cyclical, right? We would normally be the, the high volume team and I'm be coming here describing to you about what we did and the strategy behind that. And I think we're just kind of, we're good to, to sit this one out, um, let the chaos happen um, and, and, and us be quiet um, and internally, internally grow, which, which is a good place to be, I think. Someone who's never set out of deadline. Sit deadline. out the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that for you? My a few of my my guys over there. They said they said Kobe, I'm proud of you. <laughs> so uh, for for not right because um, it you you could make deals. You, you can. Um, I, I, there's things you can land the plane on. Don't just do something to do something. Um, you know, let's be very very intentional with what we're doing. You know, it's different when you're in asset collection mode. It's different when you're trying to accumulate picks. That becomes a different motivation. I think where we are now is being very, very intentional to how you're going to help this young core grow um, and set them up for success. And if the move wasn't there to do it, don't, don't do it. Um, and so to your words, I guess we, we sat this one out.